Okay, so I'm here with my colleague Tineke from Holland and she's just led on a motion in the chamber. So Tineke, first of all, can you just introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Tineke Strick, as you said, and I'm from the Netherlands and I'm here active for the Liebe Committee on Asylum and Migration, the Rule of Law, and I'm also active in the Foreign Affairs Committee uh, with a focus on human rights. Okay, great. And you're, you've got a background in migration, haven't you? Yes, that's right. I'm an associate professor on migration law at the University of Nijmegen, Center for Migration Law. But besides, I was also a member of the Dutch Senate for 12 mm -hmm. years, and on behalf of the Dutch Parliament I also took part in the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and for the Commission on Migration over there and the Committee on Legal Affairs I was a rapporteur on many migration and asylum issues. Brilliant okay and so tell us a bit about the motion that we had today that you led on. Yeah actually the motion was initiated because um, it is very appalling what is happening at the border uh, of Mexico and the US. As we know Trump wants to erect a, a fence at the land border but already now uh, Trump is pushing back all the migrants who try to enter the territory of the US. Uh, also asylum seekers they don't get a chance to request for asylum at the territory of, uh, uh, of, of the US. They are detained for a lengthy period in, in awful circumstances. Children are separated from their parents uh, and uh, many of them are pushed back to Mexico where they don't have any access to asylum and no shelter, no food or whatever. So the Trump's regime is currently really causing a, a humanitarian tragedy. Mm -hmm. And therefore I think it's very important that the European Parliament takes a firm position and urges the US to halt, to, to stop these practices and policies and just uh, comply with the international obligations on human rights and refugee rights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the motion today was a cross-party effort, wasn't it? Can you just it explain was. how that worked? It, yes, uh, we tabled the motion for a resolution and the other parties did that as well. And then you see a lot of differences, of course, between those motions. Um, and then we started to negotiate for almost five hours in order to get a joint motion mm -hmm. because you want to have uh, as much support as possible. Uh, so then you need to cooperate cross-party, of course. So, but that meant in the end, of course, that you need to compromise. We really wanted a strong, firm resolution. It still is a good resolution, but it's more watered down, especially due to interventions from EPP and ECR, the right-wing parties. Mm -hmm. But what was very astonishing is that at the end of the negotiations, just before the moment that you could change anything yet, uh, EPP decided to withdraw its, uh, its, its name under, uh, from the resolution. So that means that you negotiate, that you do a lot of compromise, that you change the text and in the end it's not supported, it's not carried by the one who asked for all those compromises. So that's quite frustrating, I must say. And uh, well, this is a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, I hope that we can make EPP clear that if they want to stay reliable or become reliable, mm. they should change their attitude. Mm. Because otherwise, you know, it doesn't make any sense to, to, to try to come up with a common position. Yeah. And it is much stronger to have a common position, of course, especially if you uh, want to address uh, another government outside the EU. Absolutely. So your motion was passed with a very strong strong majority absolutely good yeah good news so great well done for that Tineke. thank you thank you thank you thank and you. just finally can you can you because i'll be posting this on my feedback in the uk many people in the uk might not really understand why somebody who's effectively an mp in their own country would then want to become ah. an mep can you <laughs> tell us why yeah i can imagine you know uh, i do a lot of uh, i did always a lot of work on legislation on asylum and migration but also criminal law uh, rule of law etc and then I noticed during the years that I was more dealing with implementing European legislation uh, and that it was very difficult to influence that European legislation. I could only ask my minister for what do you do in the council and uh, you know I don't agree with your position or whatever. So I noticed that the, the position of the European Parliament is much stronger. It's a co-legislator 
And if you manage to influence that EU legislation, you have a huge impact because it impacts 500 million citizens, of course, and, and 80, at the moment, 28 countries. And I hope it stays that way. I hope so too. Yeah. I hope so too. Thank you, Tineke. Thank really you. Appreciate it. Thank you also for your cooperation.